My name is Mary. I'm from Magdala, so my friends call me the Magdalene because Jesus had quite a few friends named Mary. He had quite a few friends, period, really. There were the 12 men he called to be his closest disciples, of course, but there are so many others. Martha and her sister Mary, his mother Mary, his aunt Mary, Lazarus and Nicodemus, and so many more that their names and faces start to blur in my memory. People wanted to see him everywhere he went. Some were looking for miracles. Some were looking for a teacher. Some were looking for the Messiah. Some were just plain curious to see what all the fuss was about. But no matter what their motives were, anyone who came to see Jesus left with a deep conviction that he wasn't like anybody else. Whether they thought he was a healer or a teacher or a fraud or the leader of rebellion, they knew as surely as they knew anything that he wasn't like anybody else. Jesus brought people together in ways that no one would have thought possible. If you had told me four years ago that I would find myself eating at a table with scribes and tax collectors and Roman soldiers and fishermen, I would have laughed at you. I mean, scribes and fishermen, sure, but tax collectors? Roman soldiers? I would have thought that would be as unlikely as eating at a table with lovers, which we also did, actually, uh, now that I think about it after Jesus had healed them. So technically they weren't lepers at the time. You, you, you know what I mean. Anyway, I've, I've spent a lot of time with his mother and I have a favorite of the stories she tells about Jesus as a young boy and about the stories of her pregnancy. Not long after the angel had come to her to tell her that the world was about to be changed forever and that she herself would carry and nurse and raise that change. She says that she went to see her cousin Elizabeth, who was also pregnant, and who later gave birth to Jesus' cousin, John, who baptized him in the Jordan. John was killed, too, just a couple years ago. The powers that be don't want the world to change, because if they keep the status quo, they can keep the power that they have over us. But the day of the Lord is coming, and the world will be changed whether Rome wants it or not. Anyway, his mother Mary went to see her cousin. Jesus brought people together, even from the moment of his conception. Mary fell pregnant by the Holy Spirit, and the first thing she thought was that she must travel and seek companionship, because she knew she couldn't walk the journey ahead of her alone. And that's what Jesus did every day of his life. He traveled and he sought new companions and he made people feel heard and known and seen, really seen for all that they were, good and bad. Just being in his presence, it was so warm and you know how they say that charismatic people light up a room? Jesus could light up whole neighborhoods, cities even. I, I'm not even sure how to describe it. Jesus did amazing things, things that I don't know if I could have believed if I hadn't seen them myself. The way he healed people, gave them the ability to reenter society. The way he turned water into wine, he even raised the dead. Still, I, I think the most amazing thing that Jesus did was to bring people together and invite us into a new world. The world is often a cruel and unjust place, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't offer kindness. The world is full of scarcity and hunger and want and thirst, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't share what we have when we have the ability. The world is full of division and inequality, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't come to our own tables as equals. I'm so used to hearing men thanking God in their prayers that they weren't born women, that it came as a surprise to meet Jesus, who never looked down on me 
or assumed I was ignorant of the scriptures or ever doubted my ability to work alongside him. At the end, it was his mother Mary, his aunt Mary, and me who stood at the foot of the cross so that even in his last moments, he could see that he wasn't alone, that he hadn't been forsaken, that we loved him enough to be there even though that day might well give us nightmares for as long as we live. The soldiers didn't see us as a threat because, well, we are only women after all. All of the men had left, gone to hide in the upper room, but we stayed. We held each other's hands, and I think all three of us were silently praying, please, please stop this. Please perform a miracle and come down from the cross. Please don't die. Please don't leave us. Of course, even if he had saved himself, even if God tore open the heavens to stop the crucifixion, our words still wouldn't count for much. We are just women. Our testimony would never hold up in court. But I was there. I was there when he performed miracles. I was there when he spoke to crowds. I was there when he inspired people. I was there when he broke bread with us. And I was there when his body was broken. I was there. I was there. And I will tell his story until my final breath. Will you? Are you?